Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about independent events. I will set it up with, a, uh, with, with a, an, an example and, uh, again, use a Venn diagram. So let's say we got a survey of 2,000 farmers in the U.S. 351 were from the state of Alabama and 1,205 grew beans. 234 were from Alabama and grew beans. So we've seen this, this example before, our Venn diagram. We set up our Venn diagram, and it looks like this. And uh, maybe we have a question that has, uh, let's say that a surveyed farmer from Alabama is selected. What's the probability this farmer grew beans? So this is a conditional probability question that we've talked about in a previous video. Uh, all we're asked to do here is, is to calculate, well, what's the probability of B given A? So uh, given A, what, we're talking about the 351 farmers from, from Alabama, so I kind of went through that slide pretty quickly. Let me back it up for just a second. We're, we're asked to calculate the probability of B given A. So since it's given A, then I can ignore everything outside of A. So I take out those farmers that are not from Alabama. I've got the 351 there. And now I want to know, well, what's the probability that uh, uh, of those farmers, a farmer grew beans? So that would be the uh, 234 out of, out of 351 or 66.6%. Two-thirds, 66.6 bar .6 percent. So now, uh, let me change it up a little bit. Let's go back to this and let me change it up. Now, this time, instead of the surveyed farmer being from Alabama, let's say the surveyed far farmer is not from Alabama. And what is the probability that the farmer grew beans? So now I'm looking for a probability of B given a complement. All right, so given A complement means I ignore everything in A. I'm only looking at, at the complement of A, so that's the 971 plus the 678. That's what's going to go in the denominator. And now out of those, how many are in set B? That's 971. So I got 971 divided by the 1649 is the 971 plus the, the 678, and I get 58.9% for that. And of course, that's not equal to two-thirds, which was my first answer, so I get that I get two different values here. So let's kind of think about what's going on here. So the, on the, the, the first equation that I did here, the first equation there says the probability of a randomly selected Alabama farmer growing beans is two-thirds. And then the second one says the probability uh, that a randomly selected non-Alabama farmer growing beans is the 58.9%. So therefore, the probability that a surveyed farmer grows beans depends on whether or not the farmer was from Alabama, right? So in that case, we would say then that the, the uh, events A, that the surveyed farmer from, is from Alabama, and event B, that the surveyed farmer grow beans, are dependent because... Again, the, the probability that a farmer grows beans, if the farmer is from Alabama, I get one answer. If the farmer is not from Alabama, I get a different answer. So these are dependent. So generally, uh, event B is dependent on event A if the probability of B given A is not equal to the probability of B given the complement of A, just like we just saw in the, in the, last, uh, in the last slide. On the other hand, that's, in, that's dependent events. So now event B is independent of event A. If those probabilities would have been equal to each other, the events would have been independent of one another. And although it may not be clear, it is true that that probability, those, those probabilities that are equal to each other there, would just be the probability of event B. You don't have to worry about whether event A occurs or not occurs. It's just the probability of event B because event B is independent of event A. Okay, so let's look at some remarks. Uh, this may, may be clear to you already, but I'm going to go ahead and say it, that two events are dependent or independent of each other. Two events are either dependent events or two events are independent events. Of. And so what I mean by that is if event B is dependent on event A, then event A is dependent on event B. You know, so there's, there's this uh, uh, going back and forth there. Likewise, if event B is independent of event A, then event A is going to be independent of event B. So uh, that's probably clear, but I just wanted to make, uh, make that comment. A, a second remark is recall that the probability of A intersect B generally, we just saw this in a previous video, is the probability of A given B times the probability of B, or I could interchange the roles of A and B and write that as the probability of B given A times the probability of, of A. But now, if events A and B are independent of each other, so what happens if events A and B are independent of each other? Let me highlight the conditional probabilities there. And if those events are independent of each other, the probability of A given B is just the probability of A. And the probability in blue there, the probability of B given A is just the probability of B. And so 
E and E, whichever, whichever one you want to use, if A and B are independent, then the probability of A intersect B is the probability of A times the probability of B. And that's the key, that's kind of the key, uh, the, the key fact that we're going to use in this particular, uh, in, in the, to determine whether events are independent of each other or not, we're going to use this fact. So let's look at, a, 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 at an example, and I'll show you what I mean by this. So a survey of 200 fruit lovers produced the following results. 150 loved apples, 120 loved bananas, and 90 loved both apples and bananas. And the question that I'm asking then is, determine whether the apple lovers are dependent or independent of the banana lovers. That's not clear at all. To me, these things are not clear. You're just going to have to go through the process. And, and the process, let me back up to, the process is in blue there. The process is to calculate the probability of A intersect B, then calculate the probability of A, then calculate the probability of B, and see whether you get a true statement here that the probability of A intersect B is the probability of A times the probability of B. So it's just, that's the process. So asking this question, it's not clear to me at all from the wording of the question whether I'm talking about uh, uh, banana lovers and, 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 and apple lovers being independent or dependent groups on, of one another. So I go through the process, and the process is to calculate these probabilities, so I'm going to set up the Venn diagram. Here's the Venn diagram. Again, you, you ought to be good at this now. We work from the inside out, so I started with the 90, uh, the 90 people that love bananas uh, and apples, and then 60 more uh, loved apples but not bananas. That's got me to the 150 and so forth. I'll let you fill out the rest of it. And so I've got three, three probabilities to calculate. I'm going to calculate the probability of A and B. Well, that's the 90 people there in the middle in the intersection divided by the 200 total. I'm going to calculate the prob... Uh, I gave the decimal values, 0.45. The probability of A would be, well, that's the 150 out of the 200, so that's 0.75. And then the probability of B would be 120 out of the 200, so that's 0.6. And what I recognize is that when I multiply the 0.6 times the 0.75, I guess I wrote it the other order, I, I get 0.45. In other words... The probability of A is equal to the probability, I'm sorry, the probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B, and that tells me that the events are independent events. A and B are independent of one another since I, I got an equal to that. If those would not have been equal to, if those, that, that last line there, the probability of A intersect B would have not been equal to the probability of A times the probability of B, I would have said that A and B are dependent events. But since they were equal, A and B are independent events. Okay, we'll do an example uh, in the next video. I'll see you then.